Good evening, everybody. Looking like a bum. So today's gonna be pretty cool. Um, I'm actually gonna be headed to BNR fittings right now, and he's an hour and a half away from me. But he is the guy I go to for a lot of my fittings and lines. I'm gonna meet up with Brian at his house. He's gonna help me build my fuel line system, pick up a fuel pump, a fuel pressure regulator, and everything else to get this bad boy ready for some high horsepower. I'll explain a little bit more about why I'm converting my lines and everything for um, E85 when we get there. We'll talk to Brian a little bit more and get some more inputs on why it's important to change your lines out, so on and so forth. But right now, I got my fuel rail right here so we can get the correct fittings for this fuel rail and the plug for the FPR um, to block off the AEM when I have on here currently because I'm going to be running an external FPR so right now I'm going to go grab some gas some energy drinks and head out so I've been on the road for an hour and a half I just exited a lot of stop and go traffic because you know SoCal came to NorCal for Thanksgiving and uh, NorCal went to SoCal for Thanksgiving so everybody's returning home for the weekend and um, I'm about maybe three miles out from Brian's home. And I uh, just want to give you guys a quick little update on what's been going on with the CRX and the turbo motor. If you guys watched the video from the Chronicle coverage, I was supposed to pick up a GSR motor on the way home. But the guy sold it on my way home, so I lost out on that deal. And... Um, I am not putting an all-motor setup into the CRX anymore for road racing next year. Instead, I'm just going to shoot straight for 1320 um, drag racing. And I just recently sold the sedan, so I finally got some money to, um, you know, knock out the big stuff for the build. For an example, right now, the fuel system, I know it's going to cost me somewhat uh, a good amount of money because I am doing a full E85 setup and I am getting rid of these I mean I am getting rid of this AEM um, fuel pressure regulator going to be buying uh, Brian's in-house fuel up uh, fuel pressure regulator which is an external setup and I can run uh, AN fittings on it for the dash 6 return um, and I'm going to be running a dash 8 feed the fuel system he's gonna build me is gonna be good, hopefully up to about seven, eight hundred horsepower, or even seven, eight, well, seven, eight hundred horsepower because uh, my friend CRX makes mid six hundred on race gas with a dash six feed and a dash four return. So mine will definitely, mine will definitely do my power goals of five fifty. And uh, so uh, I'm knocking out the big stuff. I am headed to Brian's for him to piece me the kit. I am going to be picking up uh, Walbro 450 as well because the original Walbro 450 in the CRX is now in the wagon, and I I think that's all I'm going to be picking up from him. So um, for the CRX, when it's all said and done, you know, ported GSR head, JG manifold, Pro One cam, SuperTech valve trains. This time around, E85 with the fuel line upgrade, and I am going to be running the GT35R if I can somehow make it fit. Because right now, currently, the GT35R bigger frame doesn't fit my manifold because the compressor housing is actually hitting runner number one. Uh, when I had the manifold made by Jesse at JDL Auto Design, he, I told him to make the manifold tuck the turbo a little closer because I didn't want the turbo sitting too much forward into the T-bar or having to cut my T-bar for the EF chassis. So now that I have a larger frame turbo, it doesn't fit on the flange at all. Um, so my choices are, you know, swap the GT35 into the K and the CC-1, which was originally for the CRX, back into the CRX, or retain the GT35R, get rid of the top mount, and buy a forward-facing manifold. Unless somebody wants to sponsor me. I'll accept. So, 
pretty much um, I'm trying to get the CRX ready for the race season and I know builds are supposed to take some time but I've done it a million times and if I have everything on deck I can technically um, you know put it all together fairly quickly In one mile, turn right so with one month out being the first event of 2018 definitely a lot of time to uh, get the CRX ready tune and all but um, I am just trying to get everything on hand. The other, other, the only other thing that I have to pay for is uh, when my cylinder head gets done. I'm gonna bring my short block to the shop, assemble the head myself, and get it ready to have guy degree my cams because of the pro ones. And damn, that girl's super thick. Oh shit! Because I trust my friend more than me doing it for a high horsepower build. And. Um, that's about it maybe other than the turbo and manifold situation but um, if I can get it all sorted out or at least the motor put into the car fuel lines and everything all ran then you know I I can get the car done and set up fairly quick for next season okay so we'll start back here at the tank 12 motor 125 1-8 straight hose end and then going into the filter, we'll have one, 190 in, 190, in, 190, 190 out. 190 out, so that's two there. Then the fuel filter with the dash filter. 8 and 10. And these are the adapters that convert it. Right cause, here? Because it's a 10. Um, this is a 6 micron? It's a 6 micron um, fuel filter. And it has, that's E85 compatible. Wait, is the filter in here? Oh, it's tripping. I was like, go straight through. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. These... I just got to install it. In there. Oh, you can change it. That's cool. Yeah. It gets dirty. The, e the six micron E85 compatible ones aren't cleanable. So They're you have not? to swap them out. Oh, that's, that's fine, dude. Um, they don't make stainless that will filter down to a six micron for whatever reason. So is this one paper or is this a... No, it's a mic they call it a microfiberglass element. Oh, the fiberglass is cool, then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's not that expensive to change to, it out. Uh, change out. They're like... I think I sell them for like 30 bucks. Something How often do like you change it out? I would check it since you're gonna be running E85. It tends to bring in contaminants. The yeah. moisture brings it into the lines. I would probably every couple oil changes take a look at it. And uh, the lo I'll put it this way: the longer you let the fuel sit in it without pickling your system, and you let the E85 sit in it for a few weeks, it's it's gonna bring oh, more. Oh, it's a daily. So <laughs> if you're driving it all the time, the better. Okay. It burns off all that. Constantly. Yeah, yeah. That's what you don't want to do. I deal with E85 or race gas anyways because it can, can you know yeah. clog up or whatever. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. No. That's that's thirty bucks. Is nothing <laughs> crazy. Yeah. So we got that two there. Coming out. Okay, now going into your fuel rail. The fuel rail is well. I mean, we have it right there. It's a there. golden eagle, so yeah. I know you're gonna need. It's like an eight, no? Yeah. So the golden eagle is a dash eight. So you're gonna need a one dash eight to eight a dash eight O ring boss on that one, and then at the hose end you're gonna want to connect to that. You think a forty five or a ninety? To that connect at the forty fuel rail. forty uh, forty uh, sorry ninety. My bad. Ninety. Yeah, it'll be a ninety. It'll be ninety from here. And then straight 90 up to the, okay. the rail with a little bit of like an S in the okay. line. Yeah, you can, you know, bring it around. It's always better to have some slack because you're going to be attaching the fuel filter to the, actually the frame of the car. Like, yeah. So that and then the, the engine, engine's going to torque. Yeah. So it leaves some slack in it. I'd yeah. say it gives a couple inches. That's what I'm saying, like a nice little S line. So I have yeah. the extra, if it was ever moved, it'll be straightened out if it had to. Correct. So, yeah. You don't that's want it super tight and then start engine torquing over time. Yeah, because I know the 90 fits for sure. Um, the only reason why that one didn't fit was because... The fuel filters was attached to that 90. Correct. And it was hitting my throttle. Yeah, so now it's just a 90 down with the hose in on it. So Correct. it should be perfect. Okay. So we'll go 1 8 hose in. And then. So now that's we're, your feed right there. Yeah. That takes care of. Oh, then you got the bracket too. I put that on here. The, the bracket. bracket. So the bracket. I was going to get all the shit out of that and make my own bracket. I was like, man, you got this one like with the bracket too. Yeah. That'll yeah. fit right on there. Yeah. And then so we'll figure 12 feet. Of dash eight nylon, Teflon nylon. Well, it's nylon braid braid with on the, the Teflon outside. inside. Yeah, yeah. we call it, I just say PTFE. PTFE. I'll, I'll probably forget that. I'll probably think it's precision. The same thing. <laughs> precision <laughs> PTE. Precision turbo and engine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so PTFE, or you can just call it. Um, what was the word that they use? Uh, PTFE. I'm drawing a blank right now. Dupont mate. Dupont owns PTFE. What is it? Teflon. Oh, we just. <laughs> yeah, we're just talking about it. <laughs> we just talking. Yeah, I got was confused for a second too. So then that takes care of this is the that's, feed. That's a dash eight feed system right yeah, there. Dash eight. Okay. So now we can go return. 
So return, we're returning the AEM. So um, we'll start. We'll start at the uh, the regulator. We're working our way back. Yeah. So we're gonna need a dash six to dash six O ring boss. This is a dash six two. Yeah. Okay. There's a dash six thread in there. And then you're gonna need a dash six ninety degree. So, so dash six ninety going down. And pretty much from there, it's gonna be a straight shot down to the tank. Yeah, and then we're gonna use uh, and then you one dash six straight hose end. Yep, goes all the way up to the tank before the. Then that adapter that we have. That adapter with the barb in on it. Yep. So the five sixteen barb. One dash six nail. So I was gonna buy a fuel pressure regulator from Brian. Um, but he told me that this AM fuel pressure regulator is going to work just fine. And I confirmed with my tuner that we can use this for E85. Um, the only thing we're doing different is I'm going to have to buy the, a clocking flange to turn this regulator 90 degrees because this actually hits the Victor X runner number one. And um, pretty much he has the adapter for this to go to a dash six. And um, he is currently putting the list together for the return line. And the dash six is gonna go straight shot from the regulator all the way to the back of the tank to a was it dash six dash straight six. hose end, which is gonna adapt to this dash six and the end of this dash six is a five sixteenth barb. Correct. So we're and then five sixteenth hose, which is multi fluid compatible. This is Gates fuel injection hose. And that right there is pretty much just going to go on to the 516th on the return line that's currently on the, what would you call that? I would just say the hose barb sticking out on the top of the fuel tank. There you go. With a nice, like, um... Caught a hose clamp. <laughs> Caught a clamp. hose clamp right there. Off like his uh, AN hose. But that will definitely uh, do the job. So, um, back to the drawing board so we can uh, start finishing up that list and pull all the parts out, yeah? Kind of show me how that goes on. It's a little harder with the nylon. The nylon? The nylon is... I hate the fact that it frays. Like, <laughs> look at this one right here. Oh, no, that's a, that's, that's a different one. No, I know that, but I'm like fraying like this, though. Yeah. You know, the nylon just it's frays black. out. Yeah. But the stainless steel one, when it does that, it's like, you gotta be careful because that thing can poke your fingers, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, just, I just prefer the black. It's, just, it's uh, easier to handle. See, it still has stainless. Yeah, on the inside. On the inside. So I don't have to worry about it on the outside, you know. But I just like the whole, uh, I think it's just personal preference. I think I just like the black because uh, it it's a little stealthier, you Stealth know. Stealth look. Yeah. So I left Brian's house. Um, dude, I was chilling with him for like four hours just talking bullshit, talking race car stuff. And he kind of gave me a little bit more information, more insight about why it's necessary to upgrade your lines and stuff like that. Um, the stock fuel line will will definitely work for, um, you know, race gas or whatever. But the diameter is just way too small for, like, high horsepower. Um, for EF, the feed line, I think the EGs are the same. The, the 516 line is too small and it probably will max out at, like, 500-ish, um, 4, 450-ish safely. Um going any more further than that on stock line is like really pushing it so upgrading your fuel line to a bigger diameter is uh, more practical for high horsepower cars um same goes for like you know the rubber hose that's on the stock cars they can corrode and eat itself out or whatever with race gas so um he also just you know he pretty much just showed me like this whole new uh, teflon line that's better for uh, you know uh, race gas and stuff like that uh, it's different than the regular rubber hose so I ended up picking up those um, probably gonna lay out my lines when I get home show you guys what I picked up but I didn't record leaving this pad because it's personally at his house and I, I kind of wanted to respect that a little bit more but I am here at Alex's house what up guys hey he's the one that always goes with me to SoCal and stuff like that and I you know the more I thought about it I'm like yeah I never really shown them in my videos but um, Alex, Melly, and you know, his son are the people I always go to SoCal with. Uh, whenever I go out there, you know, always nice to have the great company. He's also, you know, members of the weekend players, so we're always down the mob 
no matter where it is that we go. No matter. Yeah, so um, I'm at his house right now because literally leaving Brian's house was just a straight left, right, left, and you know, two minutes later I'm at his house, so I figured I'd stop by here before I went home, before I go home. So um, as soon as I got here, Melly already got me some, um, what is this, uh, oh, dude, turkey that's tacos? Like turkey leftover tacos, dude. Oh, you can't beat that, dude. <laughs> I mean, it made it so much more official under this, uh, what do you call this right here? It's a Mexican blanket. Um, also, too, I don't know if you guys noticed right here in the background, Alex is uh, one of them, you know, Hot Wheel collector guys. And he does customizations and things like that. He likes collecting old uh, antiques and rare or just stuff you don't see around anymore. He goes to the flea markets, all the trade. What is the... Um, Santa Cruz, dude. I live in Santa Cruz. Pretty much. And, I live uh, in Santa Cruz on look, the weekends. Look, look at all this stuff he's been collecting over the years. This is a uh, Santa Cruz on Sundays in the morning. It's all Dotsons right here. Yeah, let me try to get some light on this one. Like all Dotson, I think two. Check it out. 200, 300. Old school. Doors open and all. This one caught my eyes because I had a few of these. I actually still do. Um, he picks up stuff like antiques like this. Let me show you his bus too. I don't think I've ever shown you guys his bus. Look at his bus. Driven all the way from Arizona. Arizona. Oh, he's got the on track. <laughs> That's I had to sick. My magnet strike if I fucking lay it somewhere, you know what I mean? <laughs> so Alex is also the owner of the right hand drive wagon that I did on the channel a while back. I don't know if you guys can see that. Right hand drive. Lift it. This car is gonna make its appearance next year, hopefully with us. Uh, 2018. We're hoping to get everybody out. This is the daily right here. It's also a four wheel drive. I don't know if you noticed, Alex, but your windows down. Look at that, dude. That's hard. Should paint that orange. Hey, man, it is 8:17, and the traffic is still pretty heavy. I was dozing in and out of sleep. I left Alex's house like 35 minutes ago, and um, actually stopping right here at Sonics and Gilroy because um, this is the closest one to the house, which is 35 miles, and uh, every time I'm in the area, I always stop by to grab like a slushie or a hot dog or something, but I'm definitely gonna grab something to drink because the Rockstar, you know, leaves like an after sticky taste in my mouth. Get your mind out of the gutter. But um, I wanna give a huge shout out to uh, Brian from b &R Fittings for uh, taking care of my uh, fuel, you know, fuel, system needs and um, you know if you guys are uh, looking for any type of uh, fuel plumbing or any type of plumbing that requires like AN fittings and stuff like that be sure to hit up Brian for being our his uh, information will be in the description below for sure um, he always take care of me so that's you know that's dope and um, huge shout out to Alex for uh, always welcoming me to his home um, as soon as I texted him that I was gonna head over he already had his uh, he uh, already you know fixed me up a plate of turkey tacos which is awesome and um, yeah man like plans are definitely coming for the CRX uh, this is a huge step because this is pretty much all my fuel line system and everything I need for E85 so uh, yeah like it's, it's one huge leap. I still got a few more things I gotta purchase and pretty much just um, get ready for the race season next year. So I'm gonna grab some food to go eat on the way home. And um, yeah, um, thank you guys for coming along on my uh, daily adventures. And if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you guys want to see some more update progress or um, just anything in general related to what I do, please subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.